Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and today I want to cover some tips for you guys for the Ghost Rider title, um, or seal, whatever you want, both basically, and also a couple tips for gilding the Triumph. Now, to know, one of them is theoretically going to be adjusted in a patch tomorrow, so I will cover that towards the end, so make sure you guys stay to the end on that one. But I want to go through some of these triumphs and give you some tips that I've realized along the way so you guys don't make the mistakes that I've been making and you don't waste any extra time because I definitely already have. Now, the simple stuff is, you know, put your pages, manifested pages, into, you know, the actual book of the Forgotten. And just as you get, you know, your set stacks of pages, just go, you know, check the couple of boxes trying to finish that one up. I have apparently eight left to do and those all cost me nine, so I'm getting there. Now, heads or wool will roll. Defeat headless ones. This one is not going to be hard. Just make sure you are tagging the headless ones so it considers you as doing partial damage to them and you will get these 100 done. Very simple. This one, along with one that I will dis discuss a little bit later, complete activities in the haunted sector playlist. You want to make sure you stay until it says mission complete. That little like text shows up on the screen. I'll put it on screen now so you guys can see it. You want to make sure that shows up. And you want to make sure, before you go into some of these haunts, to make sure if I've done Moon, Nessus, Europa, it's like 1, 2, 1, 0. Then if you've gone to the end of the mission and you actually see mission complete and you come in here and maybe it's like 1, 2, 1, 1. I did one in EDZ, for example. Make sure it counts or do not leave until it does. Whether you have to stay all the way through the 30 second timer, all the way through the kill screen until you are like back in orbit... Make sure it counts because I can tell you it's not that long to wait 30 more seconds to make sure one of these counts as opposed to have to repeat what you're doing. Ask me how I know I've left some of these too early. So make sure you get credit before you leave the activity because I promise you I have even though I've killed the boss and then I've picked up my loot and yet the mission complete thing either didn't show up or I was just a little too fast. I only have like... <laughs> A really sad number of these done right here. I've done four haunted sectors. There are a maximum, and I tell you, a maximum of 15 headless ones if you're perfect. I've already killed 100. So that's just proof to you that I've already missed a few of these, but I've probably missed even more than that because I've also missed a couple of these. So please, make sure you stay until the activity is done. I cannot stress that enough. Next one, Candy Corner. Earn activity, uh, just leave your mask on. I know I said this in a previous video, but leave it on. If you're doing Trials of Osiris, maybe, but there's a benefit to leaving it on there. Honestly, if you just go to uh, Eva Levante, like I should probably have mine on right now, and I don't. If you go to Eva Levante, you can sit there and buy masks for 100 Glimmer, and you can get a mask that actually has very good stats, and you don't have to, like, masterwork it per se, but I have like a 66 stat roll with high resilience, recovery, just they're 100 glimmer. Buy a couple. They're decent stat rolls and they're only active, so you can't really like save this for the future. You can't buy like a high stat roll for 100 glimmer, but get a good mask so then you don't feel so bad about leaving it on for whatever activities you're doing. If you're trying to do like a Grandmaster Nightfall and you're like not like you're stressing, don't worry about that. But all I can say is generally you can leave it on for most things. And again, trials even as freelance going on, which you should take advantage of. I'll tell you in a second. But just leave it on. Get all your candy. There's a lot of the candy get to get if you're going to guild this thing. Purchase the grab bags. Make sure you get three grab bags with all that candy. Shouldn't be very difficult. Get your sniper kills. Get your auto rifle kills. Get your pulse rifle kills. Arc energy kills. Use an arc subclass <clears throat> for most things that you're doing. And then also to make it more efficient, try and use an exotic of your class that's going to allow you to have more abilities kills. So for a Titan, for example, I can run Heart of Inmost Light. I'm going to use my grenade and get my melee back faster. Use my melee, get my grenade back faster. That kind of thing. Armamentarium, double grenades. Insurmountable School Fort, perfect for arc kills because if you get a arc kill, then you're typically going to get that energy back and be able to do it again, especially in PvP, but also PvE. You can do a lot of like arc kills with that one. Hunters, Shinobu's Vow is amazing for this. It's arc grenades. Um, you're going to have an extra grenade that you can use. You also, when you get kills, you're going to return grenade energy, so you're going to have those grenades popping out much more frequently. That's probably the best ones I can think of specifically for arc. If you're going to go pop a whole bunch of rally flags, in theory, you could use Raid and Flux to get your super. You just got to find a place for a whole bunch of enemies collected. Now, if you want to go hit a rally flag at the Shurochi checkpoint in the you know Last Wish Raid, 
and then pop this thing and go kill like 60 guys or however many this thing's gonna last for, you could probably do this pretty quickly with this. So if you just wanna throw the exotic on, go into the raid, hit the checkpoint, and then just knock this out quickly for arc, also an option. Warlock, similar thing. Crown of Tempest for arc, great for storm trance, great for arc abilities, jolting. If you've got a volt shot sidearm with like feeding frenzy, like I've talked about crafting, that's gonna be an amazing one to use. Getaway artist, have your arc soul just hitting stuff all the time, getting you kills that way. Like get arc kills and use exotics that are gonna, that are gonna help you get arc kills as well. So keep that in mind. Those are probably the exotics that I recommend to make this as relatively easy as possible. But if you leave some of those on, and I know some of them are gonna be helmets, so try and do something that's not a helmet. So like insurmountable skull for it, if you just wanna go knock it out, you won't be getting candy, but you can go get your art kills, that kind of thing. Ritual activities, remember, strikes, crucible matches, and gambit. I've done my crucible matches in gambit. I need to do a few more strikes. Make sure you're doing strikes here as opposed to catch crash, because catch crash doesn't count for this one, but strikes will count for this one, so you may as well make it work double duty. You still need to do like 20 or 25 of these things. So you're going to be doing a whole bunch, but make sure you do crucible matches, strikes, gambit. Knock this out before you start farming pages, because otherwise you're going to end up with like 200 pages. And yet you still are going to, if you want to try and actually get the seal, you're going to need to go run a bunch of strikes. So remember, do this before you go farm pages and like the Witch Queen missions. They're efficient, but you don't need to do those until you figure out how many you need left. Masked Bandit. Um, just literally complete matches, strikes. This one is the other one. Do not leave the actual lost sector or the haunted sector until you get the completion. If I go into a haunted sector and I know this is sitting at four, I'm not going to leave that activity until I see five. Now, if the mission complete pops up, as I showed you guys, and then I go into my inventory and I check and I see this thing is now up at five, then I can leave. But do not leave until you confirm that you got credit for being there. So that's the main actual like playlists themselves. Then we talk about the triumphs. Now this one I'm gonna cover last because there's a patch coming for it. Mask Mayhem. Now, while wearing a festival mask, hence why if you wanna buy one for better stats you can, complete dungeon, raid, master or grandmaster nightfall, or win rounds and trials of Osiris. Now, today is probably maybe a little late for some of you guys, but freelance trials of Osiris is here. You are bound just by happenstance because it's 50-50 whether your team's going to be better than the other ones, come in here and freelance and just play some rounds. You are bound to win a few matches because sometimes you're going to have the good people. Don't throw your body out there. Try and stay back if you're a little more cautious. Try and help your teammates stay with them. But freelance trials, the easiest thing that I could have possibly done because I don't know how many specific rounds that you need, but I know after winning one match, it was done. So maybe I like won a couple rounds in one match and then came over here but this was very easy to do in trials, especially freelance. I don't know if it's like five rounds. I don't know if it's like, so that'd be a whole match. I don't know if it's like eight or nine or maybe 10. So maybe you need to do a couple matches. Either way, this was not hard to do in freelance. Now, the other thing I have heard, now somebody confirm this if you try it, a master loss sector, like, you know, if you're farming for exotics, theoretically also counts. I've done enough videos over Lost Sectors, and especially the way we're later on in the season doing a Master Difficulty Lost Sector right now. Some are gonna be easier than others, but they are very doable if you're patient, and if all you gotta do is maybe finish like one or two, maybe you'll get some exotics along the way. But my recommendation, if you catch this soon enough, do freelance, or even just do some random trials. It may suck pairing up with it against three stacks. You're still bound to win some trials, and if you have a group, even better. If you're going to do dungeon, you can even solo a dungeon, probably. Um, raids, night falls, that type of thing. If you got groups, obviously this is easy, but as a solo, uh, freelance trials, maybe trials next weekend if you just want to you know, try and do it against three stacks. Master Lost Sectors, though, in the middle of the week, probably your best bet, and I've heard that does work. Not Dying. All you gotta do is play cautious, seriously. Like haunted sectors without dying, it's not a high level activity. So if you have a very survivable play style, you know, Titans, throw on Lorely, uh, Warlocks, throw on Well, throw on Healing Rifts, anything you can to help you stay alive. And then this would be the haunted sector run where you're not in the mix. Make sure you're not standing on the point and you're surrounded by enemies and there's an exploder shank that can come over. If anything might kill you, back off, play from range for one time in each one of these type of lost sectors and just, you know, be cautious. It's not that bad. Sweet Tooth, 30,000. 
Remember when I said leave the mask on? Yeah, you do not want to stop earning candy. If you are going for the gilded title, this is going to take you a little while. I think higher level activities like, you know, high level nightfalls could give you like 500. It's still a butt ton of activity. So you're just going to have to play a lot over the next three weeks. Now, this is the one with the issue. Defeat all headless ones in a single run. All headless ones is technically considered 15. Now you get 10, which you need to make sure you kill and at least damage all 10 while you're going through the, you know, the pre-boss section of a haunted sector. And again, all you got to do is damage them. You don't have to get the killing blow. Make sure you get some damage, at least one bullet numbers damage to show up on your screen for each headless one. Now, the same rule applies during the boss. The only problem is, unless you are lucky, and I swear I keep finding the decent groups on Nessus and nowhere else, but that's a different story. When it gets to the boss phase, you're going to have the boss appear. Then you're going to be able to do some damage. He's going to get a shield at two-thirds health. When that happens, what's going to happen is you're going to have two headless ones that spawn. And when you kill those guys, they drop the little pumpkins. Those are used to break his shield. Now, if you just nuke him, you're not going to get all of them to spawn. But the problem is, if you nuke, if you don't do any damage, you won't get to the next damage phase. So you need to do enough damage to get to that next shield, which is the final third. Then you have three headless ones spawn. Now, when three headless ones spawn, you basically all three of you need to split up. And if you're doing with this this with randoms, it's really really hard to convey that that's what you need to do. Sometimes you'll notice there are people who are very specific about it, and at that point you're going to notice that like everybody goes to. Summon a headless one. Everybody runs around. Make sure you get damage on each one. And again, you may summon one. If somebody else summons theirs, peek your head out around the corner. Get some damage on that one. Somebody else summons theirs. Peek your head out. Get your damage on that one. And then same for you. Whichever, if you're summoning that last one, make sure you get some damage on it as well. My advice to be nice to your teammates. Please do not use things like Gallowhorn when it's a solar burn and heavyweight is on. Please do not use things like Thunder Crash and just delete some of these headless ones. Give your teammates a chance to tag them, please. Otherwise, they're just going to have struggles with this one. Now, I say all of that being as I don't know what they're going to change tomorrow, but supposedly they are shooting for a hotfix tomorrow that is going to reduce the number of headless ones that you need to kill, or at least tag, and I say tag by do some damage to them, to basically satisfy the objectives for this. Now, if they take it down to like 12, you still need to be a little bit on your game, damaging all 10 as you go, but you likely should be able to damage two during the whole boss phase encounter. So maybe they bring it down to 12, that's reasonable. If it's like 14, that's still gonna be pretty tight. So I don't know what they're gonna bring it down to, but that <laughs> that is how this works. So if you're having issues, make sure you're tagging each headless one as it spawns like even if you you know one's going to spawn and you throw a grenade there that's going to hang out for a little bit so you get a little bit of damage and you move on to summon the next one, you just get some damage on each one and you are good. But on the moon, Nessus, you're open EDZ. This is going to obviously be easiest done with a group. But if you have someone who is nuking like headless ones, it's probably not going to be the run for that one. You have a lot of chances, obviously, because you got to do this 35 times. And since I messed it up, I got to do a little more. But... Your goal is to try and make sure you do not kill things too fast. So try and be reasonable to your teammates. Kill the headless ones with more reasonable things as opposed to nuking them with supers and nova bombs and thunder crashes and gallahorns. Especially if the modifier is like solar, don't fire a gallahorn and like take away the chance for your team to get them. Give a chance for it to go through. And then if you see one hanging out with a really low health, then you could probably finish it up. But try and give everybody a chance to tag every headless one. Everybody is trying to work together. Supposedly, this will get fixed tomorrow. What I'm going to do is as soon as I see the patch note, I'm going to copy it into a pinned comment and you get, and also probably put it in the description as well and let you guys know one of many requires 12 or 13 or 10 or however many headless ones to satisfy. And then you know how many you've got to shoot for. But that is what you have to do right now, at least until this has changed. And even then, you still need to tag as many as possible, which is probably going to be a few less than all of them. Uh, when that patch comes in, do damage to every headless one to make sure you're trying to get credit for this title. But that's the biggest thing. Make sure you do not leave the haunted sector until you get credit for it. I have done that more times than I care to share. That's why I'm only on this one, but I'm done with 100 headless ones. I've run, run like seven and I have credit for four. And I've probably run much more than seven and I still only have credit for four. So don't leave. Leave your mask on for as much of the stuff you're doing in this game over the next couple weeks as you can. That's going to help you get all of your candy. 
And then for this one, you need to damage every single headless one and also just play cautious, but damage every headless one to make sure you get credit for that. That is all the tips I can come up with over Ghost Rider. That should help you finish the title, guild the title. You've still got two more weeks to do this one. So if you're working through it, try not to burn yourself out and then just play the game as you normally would once you're just going for candy, you know, running strikes, whether you're farming the haunted sectors for weapon rolls, you can do that as well. If you're trying to get a Jurassic Green with Incandescent, I understand, I'm trying to do the same thing. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like below, leave a comment if there's anything I didn't comment on that I probably should have. If you wanna find me on Twitch or Twitter, it is Ebontis over there, right here on YouTube. If you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. That's gonna help the channel out for nothing, for free, for free to you. If you hit that alert bell, that helps my videos make it into your YouTube feed. And if you wanna support me even more, Patreon and YouTube membership. For those of you guys who already do that, thank you very much. You guys are all amazing. Good luck in Festival of the Lost, and I'll see you in the next video.